I am Jennifer and I'm so happy you're here because I have something really exciting to share. One of my favorite YouTube channels, Oregon Zan, has challenged me to a cook-off. We're going to make certain things that we don't even know yet what they are. Oregon Zan has sent me an envelope with three ingredients listed and I'm going to do a version of the Food Network Chopped Show and I'm going to see what I can make with the ingredients that Oregon Zan has put on the index card. So let's get that open and see what ingredients I'm going to be working with today. I have my envelope from Oregon Zan. This is what she sent. Let's get this open and see what she put inside. I have no idea what recipe I'm going to make because I don't even know what ingredients I'm going to be using. So let's take this out. I'm so excited. I hope it's nothing too challenging. Okay. Oh, look how cute. I know she made this herself. If you've never seen Oregon Zan's channel, it is amazing. It is one of my very favorite YouTube channels of all times. She does so many creative, wonderful things. And look at the little details that she put on this card. Hi, Jennifer. I can't wait to see what you'll do with these ingredients. Happy baking, Oregon Zan. And here they are. She has them right here. Okay. Oh, look at that. Phyllo dill, bananas, and strawberry syrup. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this for a second. I'm not sure what I'll make, but I know it's going to be delicious. Well, I'm busy making my recipe today. Oregon Zan is busy making the recipe with the three ingredients that I sent her on the mystery card. So it's just like the TV show where the contestants all receive a picnic basket. And when they tell them it's time to go, they open the basket and find all of the mystery, mystery ingredients inside. So it's a complete mystery of what they're going to have in that basket. And then as soon as they open the basket, they have to get started and come up with a really creative recipe using all of the ingredients in creative ways in the basket. Let's hope I can do the same. I'll link Oregon Zan's channel below. That way you can easily find it and you can see what three ingredients I sent her on the note card and you'll be able to watch Oregon Zan put together the recipe with the ingredients that I sent. As I was looking at the secret ingredient card just now from Oregon Zan, an idea came to my mind. I instantly thought of a wonderful recipe that I've had at different restaurants throughout the years. The recipe and the dessert are Bananas Foster. Bananas Foster is a wonderful special dessert that's cooked in a skillet and it's set on fire called flambade. It's a little fancy for me to make and possibly a little dangerous. I don't think I need to be flaming my bananas. So what I'll do is take the phyllo dough and make some little dessert cups filled with the special banana filling. I'll bake that in the oven and then once it's done, I'll add the special strawberry syrup on top. Let's get busy and see how these turn out. The first thing I'm going to do is get these bananas cut up. I'll just open them up and cut them in one inch slices. I have two bananas here. This is so much fun. If you've ever seen the show Iron Chef or the show Chopped, this is where Oregon Zan got this really fun idea for our collaboration. Now that I have the bananas chopped, let's get over to the skillet and make our sauce. I'm going to add four tablespoons of sugar to this big skillet. A stainless steel skillet works better, but if you don't have one, that's okay. Just use whatever you have and make sure you spread the sugar out nice and thin. You want a really nice thin layer and I have this about on a low, medium low setting. You'll want to watch it very carefully because the sugar could burn easily. If at all possible, use a wooden spoon because a wooden spoon really helps the sugar so that it doesn't crystallize too much and make lumps. So what we're doing here is just making like a dry caramel. We're going to let our sugar go until it makes a really nice amber colored sauce. Make sure while your sugar is getting ready that you have one half tablespoon of vanilla ready to go. As you can see, the sugar is starting to melt down 
into a nice sticky clear syrup. You can just start stirring it and moving it around so that it doesn't burn. This doesn't take long at all, just a couple of minutes. I can start seeing the amber color coming out already. Now that we have the color we're looking for, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the skillet and I'm going to carefully add my vanilla. This is actually real vanilla from Mexico and vanilla, real vanilla has alcohol in it. So when you pour your vanilla in, be very careful. At this time, you could also add a little bit of rum if you'd like to add a little bit of rum to your recipe. I'll stir this in, it smells absolutely wonderful. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of my bananas. If your pan is really hot like mine is, I'm gonna lift it up from the heat just so it doesn't burn and just start stirring the bananas in. They'll start to caramelize because they have a natural sugar in them and it'll make it really, really nice with a really lovely coating on all of the bananas. I can see they're coating really nicely. Once you get everything stirred and everything is coated, then you can put it in another bowl or a dish, a heat proof dish, and then set it in the refrigerator to cool. I'll get mine into the bowl to put in the refrigerator. Mmm, it smells absolutely wonderful. Off to the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. I have my phyllo dough all ready to go. It comes in a long box just like this in the freezer section. I just got that at my grocery store and I've slid the roll out and I'm just going to start unrolling it. It's mini, mini thin, thin layers. And you want to keep this really nice and moist while you're working with it. So just lay it out carefully. It's very delicate. But then when you go to do something else or if you have to step away, make sure you cover your phyllo dough with a damp cloth because it could dry out very easily. So I have one sheet here. I have four tablespoons of melted butter and a little bowl right here. I'm gonna take a little silicone brush and I'm gonna start dabbing on the butter. If you just start brushing it on, it could get damaged very easily. But if you dab the butter on and dab it all around, it's much, much more likely to spread easier. Just keep dabbing it all over the phyllo dough. Once you get it dabbed on, dip your brush some more and then start rubbing. Just go really lightly in one direction. Just like this. Try to coat the entire surface if you can. And because it has a little dabs of butter, it spreads easily and catches those little dabs and it keeps it from tearing. They kind of weigh it down just a little bit. Once you get that done, go ahead and put on your next layer. Just keep layering one layer after another. And just do the same thing again. Start dabbing it on. And you want to work very quickly because this phyllo dough will dry out. So work as fast as you can. Okay, I have about six layers here, so I'm going to finish up with the very last layer. All right, now that I have that one done, I'll lay one more layer right on top and just lightly rub it in. Then I'm going to cut this right down the middle. Now that I have it cut down the middle, I'm going to put some butter just on one side this time. With the same process we did before, just dabbing it on quickly and then spreading it on. Once I do that, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to turn it right on over the top and line the two pieces up. I'll turn it this way, press everything down lightly. Then I'm going to go right down the middle. Again, working very quickly and efficiently. And once I do that, I'll just cut these sections into thirds. So I want six pieces right here. Just like this. And if your edges are a little jagged and don't line up, that's okay because that adds to the character of this wonderful, delicious dessert. I have this little muffin pan and I'm just gonna take this and take my little stacks of phyllo and I'm gonna carefully 
start pushing them right down in to the little muffin pan. Just work nice and carefully here. And you want this nice little jagged edge on the top so that it looks like a nice little beautiful layer of paper, just like a little paper basket. I'll do all six of these. And there we have it. Now it's time to add our banana filling and get these baking in the oven. Just take your filling and start dividing it up into the little cups. Move it around so that the little cup is nice and full with the banana filling. I always get so excited watching the Iron Chef show. Every time they start to get out the items and they're ready to disclose what the secret ingredient is. They always have something really unique and exciting to announce that the chefs on the show are expected to cook with. And there we have it. Let's get this to the oven at 325 degrees. I'll put the little banana cups in and set my timer for 15 minutes. While our delicious little dessert cups are baking in the oven, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting up some strawberries. If you recall, one of my ingredients was strawberry syrup. Now I could have just bought some strawberry syrup at the grocery store and drizzled it over the top. But I wanna make the best use of my special ingredients. So I'm gonna chop up some strawberries and make some homemade strawberry syrup. We are gonna start cooking these strawberries down. I have them on a medium high heat and I'm just gonna start adding some sugar in and stirring the strawberries around. Once this gets going, I'll turn the heat down and I'll just let the strawberries cook in the syrup. The natural sugars will come out of the strawberries and it'll blend with the sugars that I've added and it'll start to thicken up. The strawberries are done. They've made a really, really nice strawberry syrup in the pan. Our wonderful little banana cups are out of the oven. Look at those caramelized bananas. It's just a nice little sweet purse full of goodness. And now I'm gonna put on some different types of toppings. You can put on a whipped cream. You can fix these up any way you'd like. You can add the strawberry syrup, which was my special mystery ingredient. I can just pour the syrup right over the top, just like this or you can scoop out the strawberries and just put those right on the top. Anything you'd like to do. It's just that easy. Be sure to go over and see Oregon's Ann. Let her know how I did on my recipe with the ingredients that she supplied. And check out her recipe and let me know how you think she did with the recipe ingredients that I supplied to her. I had so much fun baking today and taking on this challenge and this collaboration with Oregon Zan. It was so much fun and we're already planning to do this again. The next time we're gonna do even more challenging ingredients. So we'll see what we come up with the next time. I'm sure it's gonna be much more difficult and we'll have to be more creative. I hope you come back and watch for that video coming up before long. I'm so happy you were here today. It was so much fun. Be sure to check out Oregon Sands channel and I will see you soon. Be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe.